In today's segment, I want to talk about how the possibility of the Lakers reuniting with Rondo will fuel the Clippers. Now, before we get into that, please like, subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. We put our content here every day so you won't miss any content here. Now, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Now, we all know Rajon Rondo played for the Lakers in 2020, the year they was in the bubble, when all the COVID and everything started, when the world was in a wreck and a mess and a lot of people didn't know where to turn. And the only thing we had to look at on TV was pretty much just regular TV shows until the NBA decided to make a, a stand and come with the bubble. And the bubble was something a lot that was something that a lot of people, including myself, was really uh, struck by to a degree because it was really different. It was not something that we're used to. Basketball with no fans, that's almost like playing recreational basketball at a gym with nobody in it or at your backyard with nobody there watching you. So we know that Rondo played in the bubble with the Lakers in 2020 and they won a championship. And with that high notion of how good he played or how big of a piece he was to their championship run, it really made a lot of people think once he left the Lakers and went to Atlanta to get more money and the Clippers acquired him, which was last year, it really made everybody think he was the missing piece to the Clippers. And I myself thought he would be a really good piece, missing piece to what the Clippers needed. I always said the Clippers needed a solid point guard, a solid, legit point guard. I don't feel like the Clippers are going to be at their best, if Kawhi Leonard has to average six assists and Paul George has to average five or six assists as well, because they're not point guards. If they give you four or five assists additionally to what they usually do, which is score and play defense, that's fine. But don't expect that out of them every time because you're taking away from their abilities and their game to add something else to their game that they haven't done throughout their whole career. And they've been in the league 10 years plus between both of them. So, or each. So this is what I'm saying. I felt like the Clippers needed a point guard. And when the Clippers acquired Rajon Rondo from the Atlanta Hawks, a lot of people, including myself, thought that it was a good fit or it would be. Now, unbeknownst to everybody else, and, you know, including myself, I should say also, Rondo didn't fit with the team very well. He didn't really have the best of experience. He didn't really look like he was a part of the team. In some instances, he did, but for the most part, he didn't because we judge Rondo because he has a high basketball IQ and a lot of people praise him as a good player. We judge Rondo off the playoffs. And in the playoffs, he was not to be seen a lot of games. And he really wouldn't, he he really, in the time that he was in the games, he really didn't contribute but so much. And Ty Lue just felt like he really wasn't helping them get over the hump or he wasn't a fit. That's why I think Ty Lue you know, had him in the doghouse, as I said before, and I also think that Ty Lue wasn't in favor of him as well, maybe because his attitude, his locker room presence, I'm not sure. Rondo has been known to be a locker room irritant as well, and the situation, or well, the minor situation I say he had with Kawhi Leonard on the court didn't set well with the Clippers either. So my thing is, it really didn't work out for Rajon Rondo in no phase or no way with the Clippers, but the possibility that, you know, him going to the Lakers again now that he was sent to Memphis through a trade from a buyout possibly well to me that should fuel the Clippers even more and the reason why I say that the reason why I say it should fuel the Clippers is because okay you went from the Clipper you went from the Lakers to the Clippers now you're possibly going back to the Lakers and you're going to try to go there and make the Clippers look like a damn fool for even bringing you in. And now you feel like you're going back to a place where it's going to be easier for you to get to a championship. And, you know, it really should fuel the Clippers to me because that's how the Clippers should look at it. Oh, okay. You came here with us. You didn't fit in. You didn't help us at all. We took the time to acquire you, let go of Lou Williams, somebody that we probably could have kept that loved being here with us. And we went out and got you and you were a bust. Basically, you didn't fit with the team. You didn't really help in any type of way that they thought that you that, that we thought that you would. 
You didn't you didn't turn into playoff Rondo when you were called upon in the playoffs, not to the not to the level of playoff Rondo that we expect anyway. And we didn't win a championship with your expertise and you didn't get along with Kawhi Leonard and Ty Lue probably didn't get along with you either. And you was a non factor in the playoffs and we were down 0-2 every series without you and came back without you pretty much. And now that. We we let you go. You're going back to the Lakers and you and, he, it, and it's almost going to look like he's trying to prove a point. The Clippers were never the team for me. You know, I'm a Laker for life, you know, and or I'm all about winning championships and I'm going back to the Lakers where I can win a championship because I couldn't win one with the Clippers. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that's what Rajon Rondo's thinking. I'm not saying any of that. But at the same time, I feel like that's the way the Clippers organization and team should look at the situation. You're going back there because you think you're going to get an easy championship. But no, you're not going to get an easy championship because we're standing in your way and we're going to prevent you from getting there. And that's how I feel like the Clippers should be fueled by the situation and look at it because... When you look at what Rondo didn't provide for the Clippers and what he provided for the Lakers just the year before, it's almost really, really mind boggling to a degree because the Clippers really thought they had championship aspirations all over that situation last year. I mean, think about it. Even though Kawhi Leonard got hurt, they still went six games with the Phoenix Suns. If they had the so-called playoff Rondo that they were looking for to play to that level that Rondo can play at, they might have actually still possibly beat the Phoenix Suns. If they thought they had playoff Rondo that was on the Lakers the year prior, but they knew they didn't, they knew he didn't fit. And I'll be honest with you, I believe the Clippers thought when the playoff started, I believe the Clippers thought all along they were going to get rid of Rondo. I really did. I really thought all along they thought they were going to get rid of him. I I didn't think the Clippers had any interest in keeping him. I thought the Clippers really was out on him. And like I said, if Ty Lue is out on you, if Ty Lue don't believe in you or don't put that faith in you, I just don't see you being on the team. And he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And um, now there's a possibility he's going back to the Lakers. So you're going to hear all this media talk probably today and tomorrow and all these things about how it's going to make the Lakers so much of a better team than what they are, than what they probably already are, which I don't really think they're that great as constructed, but they are a good team as constructed. I'm not going to say they're bad, but my thing is you're going to hear a lot of this stuff, you know, in regards to, you know, how he's definitely going to make them a championship team because he's playoff Rondo and he's won a championship with him before and him and LeBron and all the rest of the crew gels together just fine. So to me, like I said, that should fuel the Clippers even more. They should be ready. They should be intense. They should be, uh, they should have a little bit extra gas in the tank. You know, they should be a little bit more, you know, up on it in regards to this situation. And it should really, really, you know what I'm saying, fuel them to be an even better team than what they even thought they would be going into next season because now they have some motivation. And like I said, I look at it as very, very good competitive motivation. I don't think they should go in there and try to hurt Rondo or anything like that because, you know, that's just not the way it should go. But I think they should definitely use that as like, okay, yeah, you left us. Now you, 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 you're getting a buyout from Memphis and you going back to the team that you just, you, you're going back to the team in the same building as us. And that's, and some players can definitely look at that as like, maybe not a sign of disrespect, but like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's our motivational piece or our motivational tool we needed just so we can get through this season and show everybody we're not the team in the basement. We're the team. That's upstairs. We're the team that should be looked at as well. And just because they got Rondo, that doesn't mean they're going to win a championship. And this ain't the bubble situation like it was when you had Rondo the first time. But hey, hey, that's my take on the situation. Let me know what you think in the comment section, you know, about how you feel about the situation and how do you think whether it can fuel the Clippers or does it hurt the Clippers more that the Lakers got Rondo now? And does that bode well for the Lakers and LeBron? Because I know LeBron's probably happy that uh, Rondo's probably coming back because that's one of the pieces that did help them win that bubble championship. And the Rondo, I mean, uh, LeBron is definitely not opposed to that. So, but hey, like I said, leave any comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think. We'll engage. Cali Take Family as always. And hey, Cali out.